It was announced in March that Korean American pianist Soyeon Kate Lee would be joining the faculty of the renowned Juilliard School in New York this summer. E, a graduate of Juilliard herself, was the winner of the prestigious Naumberg International Piano Competition in 2010, among a long list of other prizes and awards, and has been praised by the New York Times in the past as a pianist with a huge, richly varied sound, a lively imagination and a firm sense of style. She joins us via video this week for Touch Basins Hall from Cincinnati. Ms. E, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. As I said in the introduction, you'll be joining the Juilliard faculty in July this year, returning to your alma mater. First, congratulations. There are reports saying that you are, in fact, the first woman of Asian descent to join the piano faculty. How excited were you when you found out that you had got the job? Um, I think the overriding feeling was that of gratitude. Um, I spent eight of my formative years at Juilliard, and it is a place that has shaped me into the artist, pianist, teacher that I am today. And to be the first Asian female to join the college piano faculty also, of course, holds special meaning um, because as you know, there are so many uh, successful and brilliant Asian musicians today. And I hope that this is just the beginning of many more to join. Okay, so tell us about how you began your journey in music. I understand that you first learned in Korea before you emigrated to the U.S. Uh, when you were still young. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had a an atypical beginning, I would say. Um, I, in fact, never owned an instrument until the end of my Juilliard studies. And my parents, um, at some point, bought an upright because <laughs> they, they felt kind of bad for me that I would come home and wouldn't have a decent instrument to practice on. Um, so long story short, I you know, many people view uh, classical musicians as, you know, these really motivated kids who start very young, practice hours and hours, and are super focused um, on that goal from a very early age. And I was certainly not one of them. I had a very normal childhood. I barely practiced, in fact. Um, and I was encouraged to just, you know, be a kid. And it was really when I came to the U.S. because I followed my dad um, when he was finishing his graduate studies that I found myself with absolutely no friends um, in a foreign country, did not speak English. So I sort of asked him to drop me off at a university music school so that I could dabble at the piano. And that sort of flowered into the career that I have today. So. Yeah, it's it's a little bit more unusual. <laughs> right. So uh, music and piano essentially became a sort of haven uh, for you as you're growing up in the U.S. Uh, what's interesting as well, uh, was music always a part of your life growing up? I ask this because uh, we should explain that your younger sister was a famous singer in Korea as well, Lee Soon, who is now interestingly a lawyer in New York and a writer, but uh, was music always something that was in your family? Absolutely, um, but not necessarily classical music. You know, we listened to Joanne Bez, Beatles, Neil Diamond, I mean, <laughs> and plenty of Vivaldi, Beethoven symphonies, and um, on a rare occasion, on the rare occasion that the you know, music was not playing in the background, of course, there was singing. So I don't feel that there was any point that I could remember, whether it was in the car driving somewhere or at home, that music was not a part of our existence, day-to-day -day existence. Mm, okay, so you uh, followed uh, a passion in piano and music and eventually ended up at Juilliard, where I understand that you were awarded every prize given to a pianist at the school. Uh, you continue to compete, won many competitions and grants. 
uh, most notably the Naumberg International Piano Competition, as we mentioned at the start in 2010, and one of the oldest and most prestigious piano competitions in the world, and only given out every once uh, once every few years. What was that period of your life like, playing piano at such a high level on such stages? Um, well, it was difficult. It was um, emotionally, psychologically very challenging. Um, but it's also exhilarating because there is nothing more um, intoxicating than devoting yourself completely to a goal. Um, and I think you could probably only do that in your 20s when um, your responsibility is to do just that. So, you know, it's an opportunity, regardless of outcome, really, of these competitions, of finding more about yourself and discovering the unexplored parts of, you know, who you are, facing your self-doubt and um, overcoming them. And so it was a powerful time in my life, not necessarily just the successful ones, but just as meaningful were the ones where I put everything in and it didn't go well, you know, and I learned so much from those experiences too. Right. So obviously you won some amazing prizes, uh, but you're saying you learned from uh, perhaps the prizes you didn't win as well. Absolutely. Was there any sort because of... life is full of losses, right? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. Was there any sort of... Uh, should I say sibling rivalry, considering your sister was uh, involved in music as well? Obviously in a different field, though, very different. No, not at all, actually. And I am so grateful to, well, of course, my sister, because she's my number one fan. Um, but I'm really grateful for my parents uh, because because of all the attention she was getting uh, in Korea. You know, I would visit and for many, many years, and in fact, until just recently when I, I, I started getting in the news a little bit with Juilliard, I was really known as Son's sister, <laughs> Sony on me. Um, and that never bothered me. And I now when I look back, I think the reason that it didn't was because my parents made certain that they treated me equally, um, that attention wasn't given based on outside success on my sister and I they now in retrospect now that I'm a mom I feel like they they handled this with expertise um, that I didn't even realize you know um, that it could have been very dangerous for me for for somebody to always be in the shadow you know and I never felt that so well it sounds like you had a wonderful a family and a wonderful upbringing as well uh, you continue to perform in the U.S. and around the world, but then you also began teaching. You are currently the Associate Professor of Music in Piano at the Cincinnati College Conservatory of Music. In fact, you received the University of Cincinnati Mrs. A.B. Dolly Cohen Award for Excellence in Teaching just last year. How was that transition into teaching uh, for you as well? Um, actually, it distilled so many things that, you know, as a musician, you rely a lot when you're younger on your intuition, what people call talent. And talent and hard work, that's wonderful. But in teaching, you can't just assume somebody's going to be talented, A, or speak the same language of what is, what is intuition for you. And so I realized very quickly that I have to be able to crystallize and verbalize everything and not just that to know all the different personalities because some students react people react differently to every comment and I think um, the uniqueness of us as individuals is something that um, now that I've become a teacher I appreciate more and I am more careful to nurture it um, so I've it's been tremendously helpful for my own music making, just because I've had to clarify everything first before explaining it. It sounds like and you might have... just relying on, I feel it, you know. <laughs> sure. It sounds like it might have been quite challenging as well. Uh, would you say teaching came naturally eventually, or was it something you had to work on and build? 
actually, it felt very natural from from the start. And um, I just love sharing different ideas, you know, and it might have been that I was a relatively young professor and I did not approach it with a sense of I know more and I've played all of these pieces before. I still try to explore with them to take a piece of music that I've heard a thousand times before and try to explore it with them through their lens. And that's, that's very exciting to do each time. In addition to performing and teaching, you're also the co-founder and artistic director of Music by the Glass, a concert series dedicated to bringing together young professionals in New York who love and want to support classical music. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, um, it was born out of this desire to bring people of my generation to classical music, more people. Um, and I think we all have the responsibility. If we could all always engage and tap into people in our generation, classical music would be vibrant forever. Um, and I am proud that Music by the Glass has a board uh, that consists entirely of young professionals and supported by them. And, and we create events that are just as social as their musical. And my goal is not to make classical music necessarily a highbrow event. Um, I would like to rekindle the spirit of the 19th century, where people would just get together in salons or people's living rooms and have dinner, have some music, have a cocktail, have some music again, um, socialize, make friends. This is uh, what we're doing in the age of technology and Facebook. And as wonderful as that is, I think people miss intimacy. And I cannot find a, a more intimate and communicative um, setting than a concert where you can mingle with one another and really have a conversation, musically and otherwise. I understand that with the pandemic, you had to, unfortunately, had to put the events on hold. Uh, but now that we are coming out the other side of the pandemic, uh, will you be starting that back up again, especially as I assume you'll be spending more time in New York uh, with your new role in Juilliard? Absolutely. Absolutely. I am hoping that we will be back in full swing um, come fall. OK, and going back to where we started then, uh, you are about to start at the Juilliard School. What are you looking to bring to the role? Do you have anything special that you have in mind? Well, I think I'm the youngest uh, on that faculty, and I am surrounded by the mentors that have helped me since I was 18. I think what I bring is a different perspective, perhaps, because so much has changed. So much has changed even in the last two years because of COVID. And I think what is needed as a young artist today is significantly different from what it was like 20 years ago, even 10 years ago. And so I feel that because I have... I, and I'm still in the middle of experiencing what it's like to keep a career, to continue to build on this um, in this in 2022, that I will be able to um, provide uh, advice and the tools for the young students um, to navigate the landscape of the current classical climate, artistic climate. Well, it sounds like you'll be a great teacher that I'm sure a lot of students will lean on. Congratulations on landing the role once again. We've been speaking to pianist Soyan Kate Lee, now part of the piano faculty at the Juilliard Music School. Thank you once again for your time today. Thank you so much for having me.